Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'll be speaking on how distraction and death correlate. And a good way to sum it up would be this idea that most humans are not buried until 75, yet many die at the age of 25. So energy goes where attention flows. And Many humans have the attention span of less than a damn goldfish in today's society. And what this looks like is humans addicted to cheap dopamine and instant gratification. And if you don't know where this leads you, well, it leads you to being trapped in the prison that is your own mind. It takes you away from the ability to be present and focused on what is right now. Now, and you're either living in the delusion of your future or the delusion of your past. And see, this isn't a good place to be because it takes you out of the moment, which leads to a feeling of want or desire. And that leaves you not satisfied with what is occurring right now. It robs you of joy. It's similar to that quote, comparison is the thief of joy. When you are comparing to another human, a different future, you're overthinking. Anxiety arrives and stress arrives. And then you find yourself in this place, which is not good. One of the biggest limiting factors to humans is having a closed mind. Because if you do not try things, you don't figure out what you're passionate about, what you're naturally talented with. And a closed mind totally prevents you from trying new things because you know it already, or you're just, you're limiting yourself, simply put. And a good rule of thumb is don't do things that you hate, but to figure out you hate something, you do have to try it. So when you're young, say yes to a lot of opportunities and don't get it twisted here. When I say that, I do not mean become a people pleaser. I suffered from that and I sacrificed my own um, internal peace to please others because I wanted to fit in and I didn't know that it was better to focus on me rather than pleasing others. So eventually we all learn this lesson. Well, eh, I wouldn't say we all, but many people do learn the lesson. And what the balance is, is to accept what you can't change, but to know and to work on all the things that you can improve. See, you don't improve something without first admitting that it can be better. So that is important. And what we have to do is to intentionally build ourselves into strong, resi resilient beings so that when the inevitable storm comes, because tough situations, life is filled with <laughs> hardship and quote unquote suffering. But the tricky part is we have a choice. See, you can perceive um, a quote unquote hardship as happening to you. Life is so hard. Oh, I am a victim. Life is, uh, it's hard. Or what you can do is say, you know what? This situation isn't ideal. I wouldn't wish this upon someone else. But the reality is that it happened. This girl cheated on me or my mom passed away. Th this just happened. So am I going to complain and whine? No, because that doesn't do anything for us. So what's the other choice is to seek the solution, the opportunity, the lesson that is hidden within the pain. See, Pain can be a reason to be a <laughs> expletive, or pain can be a reason to make yourself better, to improve. So it really all comes down to perception. The world is as you are. The world is not as it is. You buy the new red car, you see more new red cars. 
a theme that I continuously see in people who have made a commitment to work and, and pursue the best version of themselves is that they came to that conclusion through either a drastic life-changing experience like a car crash that takes away a parent, something like that, or you just your your tolerance for pain is it calls for a change meaning okay you're sick of being sick and tired and oh man i i don't know what determines who wakes up and who stays asleep that's a deep question i would leave that up to more of the the spiritual aspect of us being beings we're not human doings we're human beings and there's a deeper creation. Like the universe is so complicated. If you will open up your eyes, realize that the sun, what is fueling the sun? Something is, right? What makes the oceans come in and out, the tides? This is the deeper part of the universe. Um, how we have seasons and how animals intuitively know when to do what. Like, how, how does that all work? It's it's the universe. It's the deeper truth of the nature of reality. But what I want to touch on is that when people make that change, when people commit to waking up, I don't I don't know what determines that. But I do know one of the most powerful understandings that anyone can come to is seeing the feedback loops that are operating in our lives. Example, you think bad thoughts, you take poor actions due to your low quality thinking, and then you feel horrible due to your actions. And then how you feel leads you to think bad thoughts again, and the whole cycle just continuously repeats until you either come to one of those initial one of two scenarios that I described. And that in itself is so interesting. And the bigger picture solution to becoming aware enough to recognize that you are not pleased with your daily experience, that is built upon the foundation, which is awareness. And this is kind of how the feedback loop of awareness works. First, you need energy because without energy, you don't ask questions. And if you're not asking questions, then you don't come to the hard truths of your life, that you don't feel nearly as good as you could, that your life is not what it could be, etc. So it all starts with having the right energy. And then this ties back into the idea of distraction. See, so many humans don't understand how important energy and frequencies and vibrations are. See, you eat low quality food, you feel like that. You consume fearful content, you feel fearful. You have a conversation with a complaining expletive, you feel like complaining, you feel negative. All of this is connected. I, I, I swear, don't believe me. Just look and become more aware by paying attention. Well, that's not as simple as it is. The practical steps to becoming more aware and paying more attention, raising your consciousness, has to do so much with what you consume, monitoring your consumption, both mentally and physically. Um, shameless plug. I can, I probably won't, but I do have a course that covers input, output, psychological tools in many other areas. So I also offer high ticket coaching. If you're interested in working one-on-one, -on -one, I only have a three slots open. So it, it's quite limited. <laughs> There's many people in the world, three slots, it's not many. So jump on that if you would like, link, check, check my Twitter. And I will also have a link in description for the free content. So that's probably what most people are looking for. Um, the best part about the game of life is that you get what you put into it. So if you want to half ass, expect those nature results. Um, something that's very valuable is understanding the complexity of the word balance. And a good way to describe this is 
in reference to the 80-20 rule. And I'm specifically pertaining to what you consume. So I, I don't want you to be perfect, but 80% of the time you want to do what you know is going to leave you with high energy. See, energy is basically the foundation to a good life. And I don't think that you should aim to be perfect. I just, I don't know, you kind of rob yourself of the pleasures of reality. So <laughs> if you eat great 80% of the time and you make some homemade cookies or ice cream, that's just acceptable. I, I can respect that. Um, same thing goes with if you don't drink most of the year, but then you break a huge business goal and you and your friends do the thing respectable. The, the problem comes when <laughs> people think 50-50. It's like, oh, I'm going to go to my nine to five today and then drink tonight, every night. That's the problem. See, and I, I can't tell you what to do. I have no interest in that. Humans do not want to be told what to do. But what I can do for you is point out the truth of how reality works. You get what you give. If you are going to just go to the bar constantly, you're not going to get the best physique that you could have. It's a trade-off. That's a good theme. Life is trade-offs. And when you say yes to one thing, you say no to another thing. That's just, it, it makes sense. And one of the, the prime areas for you to improve, this is what like set me flying in the right direction, was removing myself from an environment that did not align with the direction that I was looking to go. So what this looks like for me is I was hanging around people who every time I left them, I felt lonely. I felt alone. It wasn't because they made me feel welcomed when I was with them. It was because I was thinking that physically being around people meant that I was cared for, something like that, some sort of um, good feeling that was supposed to come from being around people physically. And you will get that feeling. But then for me, what it felt like, there was this, this crossroad where I realized, wait, Every time I leave these people, I actually don't feel good. So that is something, a hint. If you re resonate at all with that, if you are hanging out with people and you consistently feel drained or low energy after leaving them, that's a sign. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but that's a sign. So I want you, if you do feel that way, grab a piece of paper and journal about it. Why and how do I feel the way I do when I leave these people? And just fill that page up, brain dump, get it all out, because writing your thoughts, getting it out of your head will create clarity. And then with that clarity, you'll have better questions, you'll have some actions, your subconscious will be working for you. Um, just a little side note, if you're not aware, the subconscious is so much more powerful than your conscious mind. So anytime that you have something important that you want to do or get done, overthinking, sitting here and just saying, oh, how do I do this? How do I do this? That is not your solution. What you want to do, if you're serious about getting the answer to whatever it is, you want to actually do the counterintuitive thing, do what doesn't make sense, which is to stop thinking about it, to go do something else. And I'm not saying go watch some, you know, bullshit. I'm saying to go take a walk, to read a book, to go sit and meditate, to do some breath work, to, to do an exercise at the gym without music, less stimulation, more just doing nothing. And I know, like, what is this guy telling me? Do nothing. But the truth is you need balance. So you need to use your mind. You need to use your body. And you also need to do nothing. <laughs> it's a balance. You stray. You do too much work. Oh, boy you're going to become an analytical, stressed, rational, success, business-minded person who has no understanding of emotions in the depth of reality. And you stray to the other extreme, you become just a emotional um, poet 
who doesn't make any money, then you're homeless. That's horrible as well. What you want is the balance, the balance, the balance. You're successful, you're wise, you're also emotionally deep and understanding. You got it all going on. That's what we want to breed. And then to, to wrap this up, we all have seasons of life. So where I am is going to be different from where you're at. But what the theme is, is that balance to accept what reality is telling us while also understanding that there are going to be things that we can change, that we can improve, and we should do so. But for example, like I have scars right here and my nose is crooked. I don't know why. There are things that you can't change and you have to learn how to accept what you cannot change. And by the way, you can't change other people. You can lead by example. You can show them how much better you feel by example, but telling people to do things or trying to force people to change, that doesn't work, doesn't work. You could bring the horse to the river, you'll never force the horse to drink. It's super valuable when you pay attention to the actions you take and how they make you feel. And this is in relation to habits specifically. See, you have 24 hours in a day. You do things every day that you you repeat over time. And if you're not paying attention to the actions that you're taking consistently and how they make you feel, oh boy, that's going to lead you down a, an interesting path because, see, consistently doing the wrong things is not healthy. There's a, you know, people preach consistency, but consistently drinking 18 hours a day, whatever, consistently eating Wendy's seven days a week, eh, going to kill you quickly. <laughs> so what we want is to consistently be iterating, reflecting, and improving. That's the thing. I love this idea to incrementally make adjustments over an extended period of time creates the result, which is success. You have to do all of it. You can't be consistent for a short period. You can't ignore reflection. You need the whole thing. And the reality is that we all have 24 hours in a day. So what's the difference between, you know, you and I? It, it comes down to how intentionally we act and also to know what not to do. See, often the initial trajectory, the initial opening into self-development has nothing to do with adding new things in your life. Maybe like you start listening to podcasts instead of watching random things on YouTube. But besides something like one small addition, you want to primarily focus on removing things, getting out of the toxic environment, leaving those negative relationships, the toxic connections, um, dropping your addiction to eating fast food, your addiction to porn, addiction to alcohol, etc. There are usually more that we need to subtract because you can't you can't add new habits when you have no space. So what we do by subtracting is we create the space for the healthy actions to be added. And therefore, then we replace the negative habits with healthy habits. Something that we need to understand is that the universe will continuously throw the lesson at you until you truly grasp the lesson. So if Something I noticed in myself, some of my negative tendencies are to be overly controlling and to be overly attached to connections, to deep connections. So by having this awareness, it prevents me from having to relearn the lesson because I, I know this is a tendency of my ego. And therefore, by being aware that I have these certain triggers, tendencies, urges, etc., it gives me the knowing to become more aware in the moment to say, wait, Justin, 
you might be feeling, you might be a bit controlling right there or too attached. Just by knowing your saboteurs, you allow yourself to catch yourself in the moment. And that's half the battle is just having these psychological understandings. See, you don't get rid of the negative aspects of your ego. That's a tricky thing. People think that you can just become less emotional, become less attached, less controlling. Well, you can do that through training your awareness. See, the feeling is still going to arise. You're still going to have the feeling of um, potential jealousy, of wanting to tell your girl to do something this way. But then with your awareness, you can remind yourself and be like, oh, wait, no, she is her. She's doing what she wants to do. And as long as we have the precise communication in boundaries, in what we deem, you know, respectful to each other, then things will be okay. So it's this balance. I'm not saying have no boundaries and don't be clear in communication of what bothers you and what is acceptable, but you, you just can't control another person. And if you try to, you're going to ask for pain and suffering because that is not how humans work. You control you, okay? And that's enough. You should not have any interest in controlling other people. Um, something that is so helpful is to train your focus. And you do this by activities that involve you channeling your attention on one thing at a time. So the awareness and your focus, it's very tightly correlated. And you you train your focus through your habits. And this is what I was relating to earlier with subtracting. After you subtract the BS from your life, then you can add some focus training habits into your reality, which are things like reading 25 minutes, 50 minutes, 75 minutes. You start with 25, work up. You do writing, exercising without music. Um, you know, if you're doing like a world record thing, go for the music. But on your everyday thing, less music equals more awareness. And more awareness equals less overthinking. And less overthinking equals more enjoying of moments. Better moments, better life. You get me? So that kind of makes sense. And to stress less, remind yourself that stressing does you no good. So there's no point in getting trapped by it. Play meaningful games. See, many humans are caught up in shallow games, which is, you know, petty ego things like I'm right. <laughs> no one cares if you're right. They're, the truth is like many people are totally focused on themselves. And when you focus your attention on that, which you don't control, you ask for pain because you're outsourcing your emotions. So <laughs> a, main, a meaningful game to play is to pursue freedom, freedom of your mind, freedom from the nine to five, freedom in both the psychological sense and the physical sense of reality. So what, what's the opposite of freedom? It's an undisciplined life. When you are a slave to your mind, see the mind is a good servant, horrible master. What's that mean? It means that you're very conscious and intentional with when you do what. So many humans will pick up a phone and actually not be choosing to pick up the phone. See, when I pick up the phone, I pick it up and I know what app I'm going to open. And I know what I'm going to do specifically when I pick it up. I, I feel as if many people are doing quite the opposite. It's more like an animalistic thing. Phone, yeah, pick up. It's like they're not even realizing the thought processes that are going on. And mm, that's, that can lead you down a dark path because if you are not consciously making decisions, that means you're subconsciously making decisions. And 
there's this idea that we all need to understand, which is called programming and very tightly paired to programming is the concept of unlearning. And what, what has happened pretty much from the ages of zero to 20, unless you're a little different, most people are from zero to 20, totally programmed, just quite going with the flow. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. We're young, right? I don't know, but there, there also is this thing that I had in my mind, but it was very quiet. Like something in me said, you are meant to do something different. You are meant to, to not go down the average route. But there was also another voice, which was fit in, go down the average route. So it was like what I would describe as an internal battle. And if you can relate to that internal battle... That means you're meant to be listening to this. Like if you've heard that, th this is a sign right here, right now, that you need to pursue your potential, that you need to get real serious about what you do every moment of your life. Because if not, you will be filled with so much regret because you are meant to do something meaningful. I, I can guarantee you that. If you have that knowing inside of your mind, you're meant to do something meaningful. And to not listen to that calling, oh, is that that is a mistake. But here's the thing. I, I, I believe in you. So don't like stress it. Don't worry. Uh, if you're pursuing education, education is the first step to where you need to go. So good on that. The things that you need to remove in the initiation of your self-improvement journey. Less social media, less phone. Promise you, your days will just feel way better because you're going to be forced to add new things into your life to replace that time. And what you want to do is add healthy activities, reading, writing, etc. And playing useless apps and video games, I understand don't get me going. I like video games. I just, there comes a point where real life becomes more important than leveling up your video game character, right? You have a real life character too. level up your real life guy and <clears throat> consuming entertainment for fun. See, eh, entertainment's okay. I, I love watching UFC. That stuff's awesome. These guys are really impressive, but at the same time, you have a life too, just like the real life character versus video game character. To watch other people pursue their dreams and work on their dreams, like through the NFL. I love football. You can sit down and watch a three-hour game. It's like, couldn't you have been working on yourself in those three hours? And see, balance, balance. I'm not saying don't watch football. What I'm saying is make sure you work on yourself. And then you, you can like earn entertainment, but make sure you earn your things. Don't just give yourself pleasure without earning it. And the, the bottom line is that living distracted right now, it may feel easy, but it creates a miserable future. And both routes are difficult. See, it's hard to be ripped and to follow the right nutrition, to live a life intentionally. That isn't easy, but it once you get it going, once the ball is rolling, it's so much more enjoyable than living that unconscious, like overweight, just stressful, anxious life. I promise you, it's so worthwhile to do the work on yourself. Both routes are hard, and that's just the truth. And to sum this up, well, conclusion, I offer coaching. And if you've enjoyed this, I know there are people out there who I can work well with, who we can mesh and totally transform your life. It's also going to help me. Like I need to provide service. I need to be of use to people. And so it's like a healing process for the both of us. I've already done a lot of the personal healing, but still, I need to put my gains to work. And if you're interested, um, I will have a link in description. And then along with that, just 
I do these for fun, but they're they're fulfilling, they're entertaining, they're valuable in many different um, aspects. So if you found value, just do me a couple of favors. Number one, drop a like so the algorithm picks it up. Number two, please just share it with a friend, please, a good friend. Tell them why you watched it, what you liked. And then third, give me a reply. Let me know thoughts, feedback, um, anything, you know, we you can just, hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> Whatever. But I just want to create connections with my people. So hope this was valuable. Wishing you a great day until next time.